Support Name Explain on Patreon for ad-free videos, exclusive podcasts and blog posts, and to help choose what names get explained. Click the link in the description. Eva Green is an actress known for being in films such as Dark Shadows, 300 Rise of an Empire, and Casino Royale. Walter White is a fictional crystal meth kingpin, a main character of the fantastic television series Breaking Bad, and CGP Grey is a beloved educational YouTuber who inspired many of us, myself included. Now, at face value, there is very little these three all have in common, though from the title of this video, I am sure you know why I started this this video with mentioning these guys. It's because the one thing that ties them all together is the fact that all their last names are also the names of colours, which yes I will be spelling with a U in this video, that's just how we roll here in the UK. Anyway, colour last names are certainly interesting things, they conjure up a certain image in our mind. To many of us I'm sure the likes of Reservoir Dogs comes to mind, or even the board game of Cluedo, which is what we call Clue here in the UK. What's interesting about colours is the image and connotations various colours have, so in turn we might apply those connotations to people with these colours as their last names. We may imagine that someone with the last name of Green is peaceful and loves nature, while someone with the last name of Red might be thought of as being angry all the time, though these are just stereotypes and perhaps me personifying colours a tad too much. Last names came to the English language as something of a necessity. During the Middle Ages in Britain, people actually had just one name, their given first name. However, there is slash was only a certain amount of viable words that could be used as first names. As populations grew, thanks to events like the Norman Conquest, it meant that more towns and villages had people in them who all had the same name. With just one name to call people, it was getting harder to differentiate different Garys and different Lucys. As a result, people took on additional nicknames slash by names, which they could also be known as to help differentiate themselves from others. As time went on, people started passing on these nicknames they gave themselves to their children and eventually evolved into the last names we all know today. By and large, last names here in English usually came about in one or four ways. They were either location based, meaning they relate to a town, settlement or geographic feature, occupation based, meaning they related to the job of an ancestor, characteristic based, meaning they related to a physical or emotional trait of the holder, or family family based meaning they related to an older family member. Coloured inspired last names may seem like they don't really relate to any of these four ways we create last names, but they actually do. What's also interesting is that we have last names here in English that derive from colours but aren't as obvious to us speakers of modern English. Unfortunately, however, not all colour inspired last names are equal. If you were to look for a phone book, if they're even a thing anymore, then you will find a lot more Mr. Blacks and Miss Whites than Mrs. Pinks or Mr. Oranges. I can't help but feel the most common colour last name, however, is Brown. Brown definitely isn't the most exciting of colours. I can't imagine many children declare it their favourite. However, it's an incredibly important colour and is so present in our natural world. Brown is also present on many of us, whether that be in our skin tone or in the colour of our hair. This is thought to be where the last name of Brown comes from. It's thought that the initial bearers of the surname of Brown were people with darker brown skin tones or those who had brown hair. I can't help but feel location may have played a role too. So much of the natural landscape is brown. I imagine most people weren't too far away from somewhere brown, though that's just my own idea. Hair makes an awful lot of sense however, as brown hair is perhaps the most common colour here in Britain. What I also found out is that the surname of Bronson derives from Brown too, specifically being a patronymic adaptation of the Brown surname. Bronson means son of Brown. Some other colour based last names derive from skin and hair tone too, most noticeably the last names of black and white. These two colours are both pretty common in regards to skin and hair tone, so it makes sense as to why they would become popular last names in the same vein of brown too. As these last names relate to skin tone, you may think that the name of black would be more popular with black people, and the name of white would be more popular with white people. And while there definitely are people in matching skin tones and last names, this doesn't 
always seem to be the case. In the year 2000, the United States Census Bureau published a list of the nation's most popular last names and how they were distributed across different ethnicities. It showed us that out of everyone with the last name of Black, 68% of them were white, which shows us in the United States in the year 2000, there were more white blacks than black blacks. Of course, this is just one piece of data from over 20 years ago, but interesting nonetheless. Also, the surname of Blake is a variation of black too. Between black and white is the color of gray, and this too is a rather popular last name. Of course, not many people have gray skin, but what is common, especially as we get older, is gray hair. Once again, gray is thought to be a last name that arose thanks to people with gray hair taking on that name. I also read this thought to come from those who wore gray clothes. Perhaps this relates to the gray slash silver armor of knights and soldiers in the past. Of course, gray is spelt with an a more often stateside, and both versions can be last names. I even read that the A spelling is more popular in England, despite the colour being spelt with an E over here. The Welsh word for grey is fluid, which created the last name of Lloyd, which also means grey. This name went on to become a first name too. And finally, in regards to more common colour based last names, we have green. Humans don't naturally have green skin or green hair, though what we humans lack in the colour green, the rest of the planet makes up for. Green is the definitive colour of plants, trees and all things natural. While there is an idea that green was used as a surname for people who wore green, it seems that green also came about as a location based last name. People would have given themselves the last name of green as they lived among the greenery of nature, perhaps near the village green or within the forest. While it's definitely a bit harder these days to live somewhere very green, this last name reminds us of a time where it was more the norm. Brown, black, white, grey and green are undoubtedly the most popular colour inspired last names that we have here in English. And you may have noticed the trend in why these colours were used. These are colours that are way more apparent and naturally occurring on our planet. Take a look at any picture of the English countryside or nature and you'll find it to be very green, brown and grey. And the colours that don't appear naturally in the wild appear naturally on us, like our hair and skin being black brown or white. Of course hair can come in other colours too, which we'll talk about shortly, but these shades of hair colour are way more prevalent, hence why they are way more prevalent surnames too. Let's go back to colours that appear in nature, and there's one colour that appears all over the place in the wild that hasn't become an incredibly popular last name. Blue. Blue is used as a last name, but it's not as popular as brown or black or even green. I do find this odd as blue is so commonplace around us in the seas and the sky. No sources point to the last name of blue however come from people who live near the sea or up high. Instead they point to blue becoming a last name thanks to people who wore blue and for those who had blue eyes. Blue eyes are far less prominent than other colours, so if this is the case then it explains why there are far less people with the surname of blue too. Red isn't a particularly common last name either, and ideas as to how it became a last name of course relate to those with red hair. I also read that it might have been given to someone with a more fiery personality. People with red hair may also have been given the last name of Fox, because their hair is a similar tone of fox fur. Though I also saw Fox may have been given to people who are crafty and cunning, traits we've applied to foxes too. While Red isn't particularly popular as a last name, Reed is, and Reed comes from an old English spelling of the colour red. So while the colour transformed from reed to red, the last name stayed the same. Even less common than red as a last name is yellow. Yellow coloured hair is also known as blonde. And while blonde isn't really a popular last name either, it helped create some more commonplace last names. People with blonde and light coloured hair in general are often described as being fair haired. This idea of fair hair created the last name of Fairchild, a last name given to children with fair hair. Though, what if you weren't a child, had fair hair, and wanted to be named after it? Well, an old English word for hair was fax, and that's how we got the last name of Fairfax. Pink definitely isn't all too common as a last name now, is it? Though it seems that it has been used as a last name on occasion. If you're like myself, a certain pink moon may come to mind, along with an aforementioned white. It's not a particularly common last name, as pink doesn't occur too much naturally around us. One source says that pink is actually a characteristic-inspired surname. People who were seen as being bright and cheery adopted the last name of pink. While pink is a cheery colour, it's thought to actually relate to chaffinch 
finches. These birds are cheery and happy, that's for sure, but they are also known for their distinctive social call. That sounds like they're saying the word pink over and over. It's a bit of a stretch, but a fun idea nonetheless. Just as rare as a surname is purple. I read that this has been recorded as a surname in the past, but we aren't even sure where it could have come from. Though I imagine the reason it became so rare was because of the colour's connotation with the royal family. The crown had such a strong grip on the colour that they didn't even let other people wear it, so you can imagine how much they wouldn't have wanted people to have the colour as their last name. Though speaking of royal families, colours and names, that brings us neatly onto the colour orange as a last name. This colour is most noticeably seen with the House of Orange, the current ruling family of the Netherlands, well more specifically the House of Orange Nassau. This means they have titles like the Prince of Orange. While orange is used as a title, I'm not 100% sure if it can be applied as their last name too. Royalty and surnames is a whole weird thing unto itself. The Dutch House of Orange are actually named after a town in France called Orange, which they originally ruled over. This town's name actually had nothing to do with the colour, but over the years they embraced it and so did the Netherlands, that's for sure. Aside from the Dutch royal family, Orange is seen as the last name, and it's thought that these oranges derive from this town too. This shows us that coloured inspired last names are way more than just an English concept however, despite the fact I've been only focusing on English last names and English words for colours. Across the grave we have the likes of Roux, a French last name meaning red, Schwartz, a German last name meaning black, Hung, a Chinese last name meaning yellow, Jin, another Chinese last name meaning gold, and I even read about the German last name of Liegenborgen, which means rainbow, in turn covering all the colours. Thank you to all my patrons for supporting Name Explain on a monthly basis. Patron is vital to Name Explain, and donating just $2 a month allows you to enjoy ad free videos and bonus patron exclusive content. It also allows you to help choose what names get explained in upcoming videos and gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you so much for all the support you guys give Name Explain. Thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Check out another video and subscribe to stay in the loop on all things Name Explain. You can find me on Twitter, I'm at Name Explain YT. On Instagram, I'm also Name Explain YT. And on Facebook, just search Name Explain. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. And once again, thank you all so much.